right, welcome back everyone. So first in the session will be Scott who will be talking about personalized mathematics homework. Take it away. So you're, you're at a party and you're talking about what you do and given that you're sitting in this room or watching the live stream, I feel pretty confident in predicting that it's something technical. And so when you mention that you work with, with numbers or with computers, uh, someone says to you, oh, I was never any good at maths at school. R raise your hand if this sounds familiar. Raise your hand if this sounds familiar, but you're from somewhere in the world where they would say math instead. You, usually it's, it's my aunt who says this. Um, apologies to any of my aunts who are watching this. And it's really interesting because it's, it's mathematics or mathematical sciences that cause this. No one ever says, I was never any good at reading at school. It's just that they weren't reading at the right level for them. And so a, a good teacher, a good teacher knows how to find the right level for a student and the problem is that this is difficult when you've got a class of 30 students. So this really is the sort of great promise of educational technology, right, is that you can make it easy to find that level for a lot of students, you can make it easy to set personalised sort of um, tasks for them and really you free up the teacher's time to spend on things that matter more. So this is my job. Uh, I'm a data scientist at a company called Sparks. It's a um, UK educational research company. And uh, we design and we test mathematics content and lessons in schools. And then we also help teachers to set personalized homework every week for the students. And so my job is the second of those, to set the homework. And more specifically, uh, my job is to answer the question, what's the best way to do that so that no, one, no, no child comes away feeling like, oh, I was, I was never any good at maths. So let me focus the talk by giving you a specific example. One way that you can personalize homework is simply by changing how much of it you assign. So every classroom has a wide variety of student abilities. Some of those students don't speak English as a first language. Some of them might not have um, a quiet spot at home to do their homework and it's, it's never fun to feel like you're being sort of punished in some way relative to your friends because uh, you just can't get through the questions as fast as they can. So um, we try and make our homework equal length for everyone. Now the other thing we've been sort of trialling um, in the data science team at work recently is the idea of what we've been, what we've been calling a, a research sprint and it's, it's really simple. You just, you start with a, a simple obvious measurable objective, right? Um, so for example, we want to improve our predictions of how long it will take a student to complete their homework. And then you spend a couple of weeks just iterating on solutions, trying lots of things really fast, and then you wrap up by uh, writing up the problem, what you did, how it was successful or not, and then you hand this over to someone else, so fresh set of eyes on the problem. I don't want to give the impression that everything I do can sort of be wrapped up nicely like this because education is not just an, an abstract optimization problem, but I hope that you can see that this is a really classic data science kind of task or workflow. Given some data, optimize some predictions. And I did this recently, naturally, I used Julia, so for the rest of the talk I just wanted to uh, share how that went. So, how did it go? I would say that working with Julia in this context has been very much like working with Lego. Most of the time, it is amazing. You're, things are just clicking together, you are building beautiful structures, and then occasionally, you stand on a brick. And uh, I'm gonna share with you what's been fun and the bricks that I have stood on. First thing that's been really fun, the workflow in particular, using Revise. Oh, beautiful. Um, th there is so much to be said for this kind of really tight, interactive, iterative workflow where you make a little change and you see the results straight away. And uh, I think this works really nicely for a kind of data analysis workflow because typically you've got some kind of like pipeline of stuff you're doing, like extract data, transform data, generate features, fit model, assess model. And um, I, I think I would really love to see packages sort of growing and supporting this, this, kind, of, this kind of workflow. For example, um, I, I would really love, love to see really easy sort of memoization that drops in at the key stages between those, those bits of the pipeline. Um, anything that sort of works nicely with Revise so you can make these changes and then only rerun the bits that you need. 
So this kind of touches on the first um, Julia brick I stood on, which uh, is just about reproducibility and, and sort of data provenance. And um, really when you have solid records of code and data, it makes it so much easier to go back and say what you did and whether it was successful or not. Um, and it makes a, a cinch to just answer those questions to yourself and to someone else. This has bitten me quite hard in other languages, um, in particular in R, when I've been trying to do something and then some packages update underneath me and suddenly nothing's working anymore. And it had bitten me in Julia as well, um, up until this point. However, I think we're seeing a turning point here because I think uh, with the new package manager and with packages like data depths, for example, I think Julia is going to be a really solid base to do this kind of um, reproducible analysis on. So I'm, I'm quite looking forward to that. So the second fun thing, uh, I don't know if you've noticed this, but this Julia thing is pretty fast. It's fast to run and it's fast to develop. And um, I think there's some really lovely packages that take advantage of this. So I'm quite excited about online stats at the moment. As you can imagine, in an educational technology product where you have data streaming in, it's a really natural kind of way to sort of fit and do something useful with that. Um, but there's another brick in my foot here, which was uh, Julia, not uniformly fast. Uh, in particular, again, up until now, the, the data wrangling and the visualization ecosystems have been a little bit patchy. Um, and I, I know I sound like a whiner, and this will get better, uh, but it, it is something that affects the sort of new user experience. For what it's worth, I don't think these bits need to be written in Julia. Um, I think that data scientists are all about just use what works, and so you see this in plots where you can lean on the hard work of sort of other packages. I think this is, uh, well, I think this is a great way to go, and I'm, I'm quite looking forward in particular to seeing how Vega Lite does. Uh, I've been enjoying trying that out. And so this leads on to my final fun thing, which is in interoperability. Um, I mentioned Vega Lite because I, uh, I love the grammar of graphics. I love ggplot in R. And uh, it turns out it's really easy to call uh, ggplot from Julia, really easy to call R. I think pushing for this interoperability early on was a great decision. It's not exactly solving the two language problem, but it makes it really easy to use the other language in the meantime. So my final brick is actually just about, um, it's not, well, it's, it's difficult and it's not always appropriate to convince others or coworkers to sort of switch to Julia, especially if they've got a lot of experience in something like R, for example. And uh, it makes it more difficult, therefore, to sort of share and build on your results. And I think all we can really do here is show how productive and how effective the language is. And also, I think, um, we need to work really hard on these tools that make it frictionless to, to share and build on things. So I'm thinking dashboards, um, documentation, interactive widgets, uh, anything that lets you sort of very quickly generate a, a useful write-up for someone else from the code that you've been running. So in summary, I think Julia is already a fantastic choice for this kind of rapid analysis and exploration. There's something very special about its combination of quite interesting, unique packages and uh, its productivity. I think if we're to sort of continue to make it attractive to people doing st stuff similar to myself, um, to data scientists, that we should do three things. Uh, we should continue hi highlighting the sort of best-in-class packages. For me at the moment, that's on online stats. For you, that might be differential equations or jump or uh, any of those other ecosystems. I think we need to write tutorials and give demonstrations about these sorts of rapid and reproducible analysis workflows. And I say analysis is distinct from development there. Um, down the line, this could include showing how to use the package manager to set up things in a reproducible way and um, you know, using an interactive debugger to figure out what's gone wrong. And then finally, we should work on these tools to make it really frictionless to communicate results. So as for the research sprint, the problem I posed, which was um, better predicting homework length, uh, did I make any improvement? I didn't actually. It turns out this is a surprisingly difficult problem. I come from a physics background. I'm now basically a social scientist. Uh, people are messy. It's, it's difficult to predict how long these things are going to take. But uh, we ruled out a lot of things very quickly. And thanks to the, the nice write-up I made and how readable the code was and the, a little bit of documentation I put together about what I'd done, thanks to, thanks to Documenter, the next person who takes this project and moves on with it is going to be starting from a really good place. 
So I'm quite looking forward to trying this process again and just including Julia a little bit more in my work uh, about how children learn. Thank you. Also, always nice to say that we're hiring, so if you're UK-based or just wanted to come and talk to me about educational modelling, I'd love to have a chat. All right. Um, do we have any questions for the speaker? Oh, there you go. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, is there some resource online we can see some kind of application of what we, you actually did or some results? Because due to time constraints, you couldn't really show something specific, but ca can we see something like that? I'm, I'm, I would be very curious to just see something? Um, I'd recommend, I mean, take a look at the website up there for now, but I'd be happy to chat more specifically with you because, right. yeah, like you say, there's not much time to get into the actual, how you're doing the modeling and so on, but it, it is a fun sort of problem. All right, great, okay. All right, uh, any other questions? Right, so I actually had one. Um, so I was wondering, you talked about data depths. Mm -hmm. um, did you use that uh, throughout the project or how do you foresee using it in, in your workflow? So I haven't used it yet. Um, and the reason for that is that uh, we're sort of talking about data storage that's in you know, BigQuery or something, so a database in the cloud, and it's not currently set up to access that. But I've been sort of, um, had a couple of small chats with Lyndon and just thinking about what the process would look like if you were to sort of say, my data is some query into this database and I expect that will be the same when I go back and do it later. So you imagine you have a time window that you're querying. Um, it, I think it'd be very simple to modify it so that when you fetch the, the data dependency, it, um, it goes and runs that query and checks that it's the same as before. And from then, it's just like a research data set that you would sort of use um, to iterate your, your designs or your models on. All right. Okay, um, in that case, let's uh, thank the speaker again. Thank you.